In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this exact layout on your website using Thrive Architect. Hi, I'm Hanna from Thrive Themes and I'm going to show you how you can create this layout with this nice duotone background on your website. And we'll also show you a little trick to get this effect on your buttons. Sounds good? Then let's get started. First, let's go to our dashboard pages, add new. And here we can create a new page. Save this as a draft and launch Thrive Architect. From here, you'll have the choice to start with a normal page on your website or with a completely blank landing page. And that is what we will do right now. We'll start from a blank page so that I can show you step by step how to create this layout. As you can see here, we have a blank canvas and we have the page breadcrumb. When you click on this page breadcrumb, you will already see a couple of options that might be really helpful when building a page, such as showing or hiding your header and footer, for example. This will be very useful in a couple of minutes, but let's start with our layout. Now, the layout we're creating here, as you can see, has a couple of elements. So first of all, we have this background color that kind of goes over halfway of our screen. And then we have a two column layout. So we have our picture on the one side and then our text with our button on the other side. So let's get started with this two column layout. And then I'll show you the trick for getting the color on the background. Now, the first thing we'll want to do is add our column section. There are two ways to do this. We can either go into our elements and look for a column, or we could simply start by dragging and dropping elements on the page. This is really up to you. But let's start here with our column layout. Now we have our column layout on the page. And when we hide our editor bar here, you can see that this column layout doesn't go full width. So in order to get the layout that we want, we need to make sure that this column will go full width. Let's start with that. The reason for these columns not going full width is because we have a content width that is set on our background section. So let's go to our background section here. And you can see here that we inherit the width from the landing page. So let's go to our landing page. And then you can see that our maximum content width is 1280. So rather than inheriting this width for the content on from our landing page, we want to uncheck this toggle and then say that we want the content to cover the entire screen width. So what happens now is that we added a background section, which was automatically added when we added the column element, and that this background section goes full width with the content inside it. So this allows for the content such as the columns inside to go full width. Now let's add our image in one column. And add our text element in the other one. If this bar gets in the way with your work, you can simply drag it along. So now we can see the text here and let's just copy and paste the text that we want. Now here, the first one, we want to be a title. So instead of paragraph, we can choose for this to be a heading. If like here, you see that the whole text become a heading, simply hit enter. This makes for a line break, and then you can select this and make it a paragraph. Now, the next thing we want to do with this layout is make sure that our content is in the middle of the vertical positioning. So here, let's select our columns, and then let's choose with the vertical positioning to keep this in the middle. So this means that now our picture will be in the middle and our text will be in the middle. Now this picture is too big, so we can just drag it and make it a bit smaller. Now, if you want to change the column layout here, so rather than have a 50-50 column, you can drag this to make it more um, to one side. So this makes now that we have a 40 uh, 60 column, for example, and then we can again make the picture a bit bigger. This is really up to you. You can play with how you want this layout to look. So now let's hide this. So we have the effect that we want. We have our picture to the side and then our text to the other side. So now it's time to add our color background on there. 
So for this, let's select our background section and let's use a little trick. So let's add a background style and choose for a gradient. Now, this might not look like a gradient. If you look at our example, it looks like this two column layout, right? But we can actually create this layout using a gradient. So from here, let's add our gradient and then make this a 90 degree. And now instead of going from black to white, we will go from our blue color, add a marker on the gradient, make this also our blue color. So I'm setting this to full opacity. And then on the other side, we want this either to be white or transparent. This is kind of up to you. So let's set this to white. But now, as you can see, this goes from blue to a gradient of white, which is not exactly what we want, right? So we're going to add another marker right next to this blue marker. And we're also going to make this full white. So if you don't know, the hex code for full white is FFF, so that is easy. Now, as you can see, we don't have this super clear line yet. For that, we need to add the both markers on the same spot. So here we go. Right now, we have this clear delineation for our gradient from blue and then with white on the other side. So let's apply this. Now we're getting really close to having the exact layout that we want. As you can see here, we have this header element. So we have our logo and we have our menu that is overflowing on this background section. So for that, let's go back to our work canvas and we can go to our page breadcrumb. From here in the main options, we can show our header. Now this will automatically show the header of the website, so this might not look the way you want it to, in which case we can change our header for this landing page and choose either from one of the saved headers that we have, or you can also create a new header and then use one of the templates or start from scratch. Now here I already have a saved header, so this one is simple overflow header. So as you can see now, this header is overflowing over our background section. If you don't know how this to do this, you can go into edit header. And here you can see that you can either push the content. So then you have what looks like a real header, or you can choose the header positioning to be over the content. Now, of course, as you can see here, we want to correct the layout a little bit. So let's get out of our header select our background section. So if you're not sure what you're selecting, the easiest way is to use the breadcrumbs on top of here. Select our background section. And now we want to make sure that we have enough room here for our header. So let's go into our layout and positioning and then add padding to the top of this background section. Now, what padding does is it will create a space between the top of the element and the content within that element. So here, as you can see, this is exactly what we are looking for with our layout. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you about the header. Let's go back into our edit header here, because when you choose one of the pre-made templates, you might notice that it doesn't have this nice transparency. So for this, you would go into your background style and here you can either set your column to be completely transparent. So if it was white, now the transparency is set to zero. So this might be the effect that you have and you actually want to be transparent. Or you can click on this X, which will then just assign no color to this header section. All right, now I also promised that I would show you how to make that cool button. And for that, let's drag a button on our page. Let's choose from the template something that resembles what we're looking for. So in our case, we want this ghost button. And rather than it being blue, we actually want it to be... So select our button, go into our colors, and then select our color. All right. Now we want it to be uh, aligned to the left. 
and we want to have that color effect around the button. Now for this, we're actually going to use a shadow. So while it might not look like a shadow, so let me show you this, you might not immediately think about a shadow for this effect, but it's actually, <laughs> but it actually is. So let's go back, click on our button here and in our shadow, let's add a drop shadow. Let's make this to the side. We'll soon see what's happening. So our color, we want this to be this yellow with 100% opacity, a distance of, let's say, 10 pixels. And then we want no blur. So that is what gives it this solid and not so shadowy look and also no spread. And so here, let's see, um, you can see that this will change it around. So <laughs> this is up to you, but I want this to be like a 310 probably. I can also just go in and type this. All right. And now I also want to change the hover effect because as you can see now, it has this dark hover effect and I actually wanted to have this yellow hover effect. So for that, with the button still selected, I'm going into state and from normal, I'm switching to hover. And then here we will actually delete our drop shadow because I don't want that yellow anymore. And in the background style, let's pick our yellow as the solid color. Our borders and corners, let's also make this yellow. And then our typography, we want it to be this dark color. All right. And as you can see, there is an animation um, applied here, which is the sweep to the top. So that one was already uh, in there when I selected the template, but if you want to change this, you can also change it. So this is the hover effect. Now that the hover state is done, you want to make sure to go back to your normal state so that you can start changing the text on this button, which you can simply do by clicking on here. And then in the main options, you can simply set a target URL for this button. All right, so this is how you can create this nice duo tone layout. Now, if you want to check how this looks on a mobile screen, you can go here and let's see our tablet view where we might want to give a little bit more space to this element. So in our background section, Let's add some extra padding in here. Okay. And then on mobile, you can see that automatically the columns will be stacked. So uh, the image will be on top and then you will have the text next to it. If you want, you can switch this around. So you can select your column element. In the main options, you could uh, reverse the column order here. So in this case, your right column will be on top of your left column. And of course, you can also hide certain elements. So maybe you don't want this image at all on uh, the mobile view, in which case you can just click on it. And then in your responsiveness, you can decide to hide this on your mobile view, for example. Now, one thing that I notice here is that because this is a full column layout, there is um, no space in between the sides um, of this element and the text. So one thing that I would definitely correct here is go into my column layout and then in layout and positioning, make sure that I add here a padding. So a five or a 10 pixel padding on both sides. So as you can see now, this gives it a little bit more breathing room on mobile. Now you can also see that this keeps this nice split layout um, on the background section. And that is one of the advantages of using the, the technique that I just showed you with the gradient on the background, because there is another way to build this layout. Let me just quickly show you how you could build this exact same layout in a different way and what the difference would be on mobile. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy um, this background section. So here I can go ahead and copy this. So now I have the exact same background section and just to give me a little space so that it's clear what we're working on, I'm going to add a, a margin on top of on top here. 
But so what I could also do is instead of having um, this gradient on the background section, I could actually use the columns for uh, the coloring. So let me show you what that would look like. So let's go into our background section and set, reset this background style. So we're going to delete the gradient. And then instead of putting the color on the background section, I'm actually going to use, I'm going to eliminate the um, margin here so that our background section is about the same size as our column section. And I'm going to select the column here around the image and I'm going to make this background style blue. Now, as you can see, this also gives us this, um, this separation, but we want this text to overflow, right? So let's put this blue um, to our same size here. We can still make this image smaller. And then we want this text to actually overflow to the side. So in order to do this, the easiest way would be to first kind of group these elements all together. So the text and um, the, the button all together so that we only have to do the next step once. And for that, I would add a content box in here. So let's add a content box inside our column, but above our text. And now I'm going to drag our text element in there. I'm going to drag our button element in there. And then what I can do now is selecting this um, content box. So again, if you're not sure what you're selecting, just select, click anywhere and then use your breadcrumbs. So we can select the content box here and then we could add a negative margin to this content box. All right. So as you can see, between our two layouts, this will look very, very similar. But the reason that I showed you how to do this with the gradient rather than with this column layout and then the negative margin is because it will look completely different once you check the mobile view. So on here, what we did was we said to use a negative margin of 140 pixels on this content box and um, to, to put it to the left. Now, as you saw before, in the mobile view, our columns get stacked. But at that point, we still ask to put this content box 140 uh, pixels to the left. So again, on our first layout, we still had this split in the background section, and then we have our text that is visible. In our second layout, as you can see, only our um, top column is still blue because obviously we said to use this column background as uh, the color. And then our text, as you can see, it goes off screen because when we look at this content box, we're still asking to make this 140 pixels to the side. So in order to fix this on mobile, we would have to put this to a zero. So now you can see that we have this uh, first blue column layout and then we have our white column underneath it. So the reason that I'm showing you both of these ways to build it is because hopefully it will show you the differences on uh, your mobile view and that you can also know how to correct this when it happens on your own website. Now I hope you like this tutorial, I hope it shows you how powerful Thrive Architect is and what you can build with this on your website. As you saw, you don't have to be a designer in order to do this. You can just look at the layout that you like and then replicate it on your own website. Now, I would love to hear from you if there are any websites or layouts that you really like, then please let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you are an online entrepreneur, if you are building your website, your online business, then hit subscribe, hit that bell so that you're notified when we publish new videos.